نحمده و نصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اخلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم الهمنا رشدا وعيسنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته how important it is to understand to read and to learn about the laws of inheritance i will narrate a few ahadees ibn umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in ibn majah that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said useful knowledge are only three in number knowledge of the quranic verses knowledge of the prophet's sunnah and knowledge of the laws of inheritance so you see how how very important the knowledge of the laws of inheritance is similarly hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in ibn majah that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says learn the laws of inheritance and teach it to the people it is half of the useful knowledge it is going to be forgotten and it is going to be the first to be raised of my people similarly hazrat ibn masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in musnad ahmad that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered learn the quran and teach it to others learn the law of inheritance and teach them to others because i am a human being i am going to die and the knowledge will disappear and a time will come when two people will argue about the division of their inheritance and there will be no answer to their problems so this is what instructs and guides us and lets us know how very important it is to understand these laws of inheritance for all of us So now we will be going through the whole of uh, the rules and regulations which Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us and uh, before this I would uh, want you to understand that uh, when these rules of uh, inheritance were revealed what was the norm in the Arab society the Arabs used to they never used to give inheritance to their widows or to their women folk and they used to deprive even their orphan children and they had a very queer and a very erratic way of uh, their uh, inheritance and it was like that the two men who were like friends with each other they used to say very uh, they used to make a very silly pact and a very silly sort of a covenant between each other and they used to say that uh, i am your friend and you are my friend your blood is my blood and my blood is your blood your life is my life and my life is your life your money is my money and my money is your money and you are my heir and i am your heir and saying this saying these words they assumed and they thought that they would become the normal heirs and this is how they used to transfer their uh, the inheritance to their normal fellow beings and to their friends and deprive their uh, widows and deprive the young orphan children of all the inheritance and uh, the laws of uh, surah nisa they were revealed after azmai ahad when there was an occasion that a companion of uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat sa'd bin rabia radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu when he lost his life 
the wife of uh, the martyr came over to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam complaining that uh, she has a son and she has two daughters and uh, the paternal aunt of the orphan children they uh, he happens to get hold of all the property and all the inheritance and he has uh, deprived of of all the inheritance so when the widow came over with this question and with this issue she was replied by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by these aya when they were revealed and uh, allah subhanahu wa taala has in detail guided all muslims regarding the rights of all the heirs and has explained who will be the heir and who will be the righteous of inheritance so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying for men is a share of what parents and close relatives leave and for women is a share of what parents and close relatives leaves so allah in this ayat has clearly highlighted that muslim women will be the natural will be the normal heirs according to the teachings of quran in our society here in pakistan as well as in many other societies the mis- muslim women are being deprived maybe their wives maybe as daughters maybe as mothers or sisters in certain situations they are being deprived of their religious right of inheritance in our society the replacement of inheritance to the muslim women is by providing them dowry at the time of their wedding this dowry at the time of wedding which has been provided to daughters and to sisters is not a custom of islam we have acquired this custom from some other peoples from some other nations and dowry is a it is a method and it is a way the women are given their economic support by making them a burden a dowry makes a muslim woman a burden for her father for her brother and the whole life she is a burden for the family and actually what happens in our society is that at the time of the wedding when the muslim daughters and uh, uh, sisters they are given their dowry and the fathers and the brothers they spend for all the dowry it is either by actual word of mouth they are told or directly or indirectly they are conveyed by any means that they have now got their right and that at the time of death of any of the family members they should not be coming up asking for their right of inheritance because they've been given whatever they deserved just remember this this concept of dowry is making a muslim woman a burden on the shoulders of her father and on the shoulders of her of her brother but islam islam gives gives a muslim woman her right her right as an inheritance as a right she is not a burden islam ensures that her feelings her sentiments her emotions her esteem her self her self respect her ego is not hurt so this is our beautiful religion which and this is our wonderful quran which is even protecting our feelings and our sentiments so allah subhanahu wa taala has given the right to the men folk and the women in islam and then allah subhanahu wa taala in ayat number 8 says and when other relatives that is the relatives who are not the heirs and the orphans and the needy are present at the time of division division of what the division of the inheritance then provide for them something out of the estate and speak to them of words of appropriate kindness this has been instructed so that uh, the people who are dividing the inheritance uh, may give uh, some of the wealth of the property of inheritance to the poor to the needy relatives or to the orphans so that it becomes a sadaqai jariya for the deceased and then allah says that speak to them with the words of appropriate kindness means that if uh you do not want to give them or you do not have to give them then at least uh answer to them and uh, 
get apologize from them in a very kind and in a very merciful manner and let those executors and guardians fear injustice as if they themselves had left weak offsprings behind and fared for them so let them fear allah and speak words of appropriate justice indeed those who devour the property of orphans unjustly are only consuming into their bellies fire and they will be burned into a blaze so this is the importance the verse number 10 of surah an-nisa very clearly highlights inna ma yaquluna fi butunihim nara fa sayaslawna sa'ira they are consuming into their bellies the fire of the hell how important it is to be to be aware and to be dutiful in giving off this inheritance according to the laws of quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is like filling your bellies with fire there are many ahadith in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has narrated the punishment of the people who do not obey the laws of inheritance in the sermon of the last hajj prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam announced o oh people i advise you to stay away from the property of the two weak the orphans and the widows then in a hadith reported in muslim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said mubikat seven destructive sins number 1 finding partners with allah magic taking riba or indulging in riba killing or forbidding a killing a forbidden soul devouring the orphan's wealth taking back from the battlefield and accusing accusing the chaste innocent women of immorality or adultery so in the seven destructive big sins is devouring the orphan's wealth prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in another hadith said that i saw people in hell whose lips were as big as camels and angels were opening their mouth and they were putting stones of fire in their mouth and when i asked that who are these people i was told they were the people who had devoured the wealth of the orphans similarly in another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said four people who allah would not let enter the paradise and similarly in another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said four people who will be deprived even of the scent of the paradise or jannah these four people in both these hadith are what those who indulged in sood those who who were habitual of drinking that is wine and those who disobeyed or mistreated their parents and those who devoured the wealth of the orphans so this is the importance according to quran and hadith to know to understand and to obey the laws of inheritance so allah subhanahu wa taala now explains the law of inheritance and he explains in ayat number 11 allah instructs you concerning your children for the male now allah is going to give us the fractions for the children for the spouse and for the parents allah instructs you concerning your children for the male that is for the son what is equal to the share of two females that is the daughter this again is a point where there's a lot of hue and cry and this again is used to misguide muslim women saying that see islam gives a double right of inheritance to the daughter uh, to the son as compared to the daughter to the husband as compared to the wife and to the brother even in certain conditions when the brothers and sisters are kept in getting the inheritance so this is a, a a very big injustice on the part of quranic educations what is this why is the daughter being given half as compared to the son just let me explain you in short You know that in Islam Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala puts no economic commitment on a Muslim woman. The 
the muslim women are allowed to own their personal property they are allowed to earn according to the limits of quran and sharia and when they earn and when they possess their property her property and her wealth is just her wealth she has no duty she has no obligation of any family member whatsoever she is not provide supposed to provide for her father for her brother for her son for her husband in any form whatsoever moreover beyond that any muslim brother father husband or son cannot force her mother daughter any muslim relationship women to earn for him and if she is earning he cannot forcibly take it from her and if he does so he is doing a sin he is committing a sin so in this background when she uh, she is allowed to earn she is allowed to own her own personal uh, property and moreover she has no economic commitments allahumma ajirna min an-nar allahumma ajirna min an-nar allahumma ajirna min an-nar rabbana asrif anna azab jahannam inna azabaha kana gharama innaha saat mustaqarr wa maqama allah subhanahu taala help us learn help us understand and comprehend the laws of inheritance help us remember and obey the laws of inheritance help us help us pass on and teach others these law of inheritance rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin